Hi, I'm Cody Alexander bringing you your next installment of MQ Quick Hits. This episode, we will talk about soft press. I'll detail it all from alignment, assignment, and uh, how we use our foot, how we how we use our feet, how we use our hands, everything from that. I'm going to be using get some game film. Uh, here we go. We're going to look at the corner up top. I've highlighted it there for you. Uh, the biggest thing with him, I want a nice, solid stance. So the first thing I'm going to teach is as he gets in, you can notice he's going to put his feet together shoulder width apart. He's going to have his hands on his table. His elbows are going to be at a 90 degree with the hands on the table. That, that just means that his palms are ready to go. He's up. He's ready for that offhand jam. Now the initial steps is are a quick foot shuffle. I want constant uh, pressure on the ground. That way I can, I can jab inside or out. The reason why we want to stay square and not get our butt to the sideline is we don't want the receiver to be able to free release inside or free release outside. Uh, we want to uh, square up. I want him on the inside eye, so his outside eye is on the inside eye of the receiver. What soft press does is it forces the receiver to really make his make his move early or decide where he wants to go. Um, so instead of jabbing inside and then working out, if he jabs inside, well, the corner is just going to continue to work back. So he's going to continue to work back in, in this. And what ends up happening is as the receiver does that, he panics a little bit because it, it, most of the time in press, it, you want to make a jab or you want, to, you want to make the corner move. Well, if he jabs and we continue to work back, now he hasn't made us move. So what ends up happening most of the time, the receiver is just going to run right into the guy or eventually throughout the game, the receiver is just going to make an outside release or just make an inside release and actually makes it easy for the corner. So let's watch the initial footwork here. Now, notice that the corner pops his feet. I don't necessarily like that he kind of comes forward and on his toes. I want him to actually shuffle back a little bit. Um, but he is he is popping his feet and he's making his uh, he's making the receiver. Look, notice the receiver makes a little bit of a. Uh, Kind of a stutter step and the corner doesn't even move for it once the receiver deviates from the path so he's now going outside we're going to latch on inside and work to the cutoff work to the near hip and i'm going to actually punch with my off hand the reason why we want to punch with our off hand is is, is if we punch with the outside hand we're actually going to lock our hips so if the momentum's going this way and we're punching this way we've actually locked our hips instead we want to offhand jam we want to pop them on that shoulder get him to work the sideline we want to use the sideline to our advantage let's look at another clip here again we're going to watch the uh, cornerback up top now this is a, a little bit better example of footwork right here He's gonna get that nice. He's gonna get that nice foot fire that I want. Let's look at it again. If you can see, he's got his feet firing, feet firing. I'd like his hands a little bit more on the table, um, but notice the receiver doesn't even make a move. And it's that soft press that really does that. That hard press makes that makes that receiver make a hard move, right or left. And what that can do is is get the corner out of position early on. In soft press, we're actually going to catch the receiver. I don't want him making a. I don't want him to uh, try and get his hands on it until the receiver's actually made his move. So right here, we got that. And what we what we get here is just a simple stop route, and we're in man covered right here. So we get a stop route. He tops that route. His feet are firing, and notice he stays in good. He stays in good position in a crash position. He's working to. He's working to cut off right here. Let's look at the corner on the bottom, right here. He gets a nice little foot fire. What I would tell him is don't don't necessarily. Um, Oh, see how he's getting a little bit cocked to the outside. We want to keep shoulder square. But once we get that, we're working to cut off again. I don't like his hands flying all over the place. I'd rather him be more in control. Work to that near hip, near hip of the receiver to, for the offhand jam. But if you notice, both corners in this in this instance have good good footwork. The one on the bottom is is kind of a a good example of a feather as well. He's getting chop chop chop. Feet are making contact. Receiver goes outside. I'm working to the near hip. So the angle of the corner on the bottom is, isn't preferably what we want. We want him to actually work to the near hip. That's what we would teach. Let's look at an example of a, a bad example or why we don't want to uh, do the hard press. Notice the corner on the bottom. He's very, very close. He's almost, uh, head's almost over. Uh, and and we, this is what is typical of a hard press. Now, he is feathering off, but what ends up happening is is once that receiver has made his move outside, we are now out of position. Had he had been a yard back, a yard to a yard and a half back, he would have actually been able to work to the cutoff of the receiver. Now we're inside leverage, and now he's in trail technique. 
He's panicked because the guy's going, the guy's running right by him. We don't get to cut off. We're in trail technique, and what ends up happening, ball gets overthrown. We don't get our head around. So what ends up happening, and he, this is a sophomore corner. Uh, your your older corners, they don't panic as much when they get when they get beat because they've, they've experienced, they've lived it, and they've survived it. But in this case, uh, he's in a hard press. He he throws his hands back, and notice he actually false steps. The right foot comes up. Uh, now he's out of alignment. We do get the offhand jam, but now we're in trail technique. We don't get to the cutoff. Whereas if we were, let's say, if we were a uh, instead of being uh, almost over the ball if we were a little bit further off maybe about right here uh, we would have been able to get to the cutoff and actually eliminate the route so instead of that they see the hard press play action and then he's taking it down the field to the sideline and it's a jump ball which is a, which is not a situation we want to be in uh, so again let's go back to this this example I just want you guys to look at it again um, up top we're going to feather off we're going to work to the top of the receiver. We're going to work uh, to cut off anything on the sideline. We want our hands on the table so we can get our offhand jam. Again, we don't want to be too close. When we're too close, there's too much room for error. We can easily be we can easily be uh, in a bad position early on. We want the receiver to panic. We don't want the DB to panic. So as we feather off back. We want him to decide where he's going to go. So if he pops inside to work outside, we're just going to continue to work back this, and we're just going to relate to it. If he continues on that path, then that is when we will continue it and top the slant and work to compress that route back to the uh, back to the line of scrimmage. If he works outside, we want to we want again offhand jam. In this case, it'd be the right hand, and we want to work him to the sideline and work to a cutoff. Uh, that way, we can be in control. If you look at this right here, we are out of control. So we we get a, a little bit on we get a little bit on our heels because we're so close. Receiver doesn't even make that great of a move, uh, and we're already out of position. I'm putting my hand on his shoulder instead of working a cutoff. And what does that do? We're in trail technique with no help. We don't get our head around, and we get a, we get a little bit of a push off, and we get thrown right over right over our head. So whereas, again, we want to make sure, if you look in this first clip, let's go back to the first clip. So, again, we're right here. He's going to feather back. Let's watch this. So he's going to feather back. He's not going to take the bait from the receiver. We, we take it. We get to cut off real early, and now the route, the route is done. So feather, feather, feather. Work to cut off. Notice how he is slightly in front of the receiver. He's in the near hip. We have hooked his arm. Uh, and just it, we remember, we don't want to arm bar because arm bar is illegal. We want to hook that. We want to hook the elbow uh, and in control. So our hip wants to be on top of his near hip. That that means we are in control. So when he breaks, I'm able to break as well. Now let's go back one last time. Look at this. This is why you don't want to play that hard press. He's in panic mode from the get. Receiver doesn't even have to make that much of a move. He just runs to the outside. What we don't want as corners is to get into a track meet. If he's even, he's leaving. If you've ever heard a uh, wide receiver coach or a quarterback coach talk about that, if he's even, he's leaving. Remember, we're the ones that have to react on defense. We're the ones who are out of position from the get, especially a corner. We're going the wrong way. We're running backwards. So for the receiver, we want to always be in control and in front. Uh, we don't have any safety help right here, so we don't want to be in a trail technique. We actually want to work to cut off. I would prefer that he's here. Notice he hasn't even deviated anywhere from that straight line. He literally is running down a straight line. We're not working him there. So again, the reason why we want to go to soft press is so that we are allowing him to have a better shot at defending the route. We want the offense to see that we're pressing, which eliminates routes. We're basically going to get a fade or we're going to get a slant. Uh, we're not going to get a hitch. If we do, if we do get a hitch, it's going to run right into us. Um, and it's mostly because they're trying to pop somebody in behind us. So, again, if you're running a, a press quarter scheme, this is a good look at, at why you want to play more of a soft or a catch technique 
with your corners. It gives your corners a lot more time and it kind of alleviates that pressure of having to get a jam right off the bat. Now, if you have a kid that's physically better than the receiver going up and you know, hey, I can hard jam that kid and just just eliminate it, then by all means do so. But if you're playing with some kids or you're going up against receivers that are, are, that are pretty good and, and they're good off the line, go ahead and get that soft press. Again, that soft press forces the receiver to to panic because he's not the corner's not moving so therefore he doesn't have anywhere to go uh you can see here he makes one little jab step inside and we're we're off bounce uh we're already beat if you go back to the top right here he kind of does a stutter step corner continues to just move back and then we work to a top go back to the very beginning we're going back right there receiver kind of makes a little stutter step again Corner doesn't react, forces them to the sideline. So in each little clip that I've given you, you know, I've described to you what exactly we're looking for uh, in soft press. Again, make sure you visit the website matchquarters.com. I've written an article on, on press and why press should be your go-to. Uh, interact with me on Twitter. Uh, you can DM me with questions or you can use the contact form uh, within the website. And again, uh, check out Match Quarters on YouTube uh, where there will be, uh, I've put some videos up there along with all the quick hits. So again, matchquarters.com, come learn the art of X.